Step Into the World of Peyton Place, a TV show that got people talking back in the 60s. It's all about drama, love, lies, and secrets in a small town. Every episode is full of surprises, making you laugh, gasp, and maybe even shed a tear. What makes this series special? Is it the interesting characters, the exciting story, or how it shows the ups and downs of people? Who's your favorite character, pulling you deeper into the show? We want to hear your favorite memory or story about Peyton Place. Share it in the comments below. Your thoughts make the Peyton Place fan community even better. Stay tuned for more fun facts about the show. There's always something new to learn. Premiering in the autumn of 1964, Peyton Place made waves as a scandalous primetime soap opera challenging moral standards of the early 1960s. Set in the quaint New England town of Peyton Place, the show delved into characters' private lives, tackling taboo subjects that gripped audiences. From adultery to teenage pregnancy, mental health struggles, and even murder, the show pushed boundaries with its storytelling. Shot in black and white, each episode ran for about 25 minutes and featured a visually appealing cast, including Mia Farrow, Ryan O'Neill, Dorothy Malone, Ed Nelson, and Barbara Parkins. The characters breathed life into these taboo narratives, adding depth to the exploration of societal norms and personal challenges. In summary, Peyton Place was groundbreaking television, challenging moral norms of its time with its provocative plot lines and memorable characters. It remains a significant part of television history. The TV series Peyton Place, which was loved by millions, starred actors like Ed Nelson and Barbara Parkins, who stayed with the show for all five years. They appeared in the first and last episodes, leaving a strong impression on viewers. From starting in black and white and switching to color in 1966, they played their roles with great commitment, earning praise and admiration. During its peak, Christopher Connolly received an incredible 400 fan letters every week, showing how much people loved the series. Peyton Place wasn't just a story. It became really popular and important in society. Its exciting plots and interesting characters grabbed people's attention all over the world, and it still has an impact today. Looking back, Peyton Place is a big deal in TV history, showing how powerful a good story and memorable characters can be. Its influence goes on for years, inspiring new creators and still entertaining people whenever they watch it. This was Peyton Place debuted in 1964 with Warner Anderson as Matthew Swain, who later continued as the show's narrator. Anderson didn't receive on-screen credit for this role. Lee Taylor Young was the only co-starring actress to receive individual credit. Originally planned as an hour-long series by Paul Monash, it was eventually condensed to 30 minutes. Despite changes, the show maintained its essence until its end. Barbara Parkins gained significant popularity during the series' run, leading to discussions about a spin-off series tailored for her, titled The Girl from Peyton Place. However, plans for the spin-off were ultimately abandoned. In the summer of 1968, Barbara Rush turned down roles in two films despite being offered them during the show's hiatus. Although Ed Nelson and Barbara Parkins received credits for all 514 episodes, neither appeared in every segment. Speculations circulated about the potential cancellation of the beloved show in the late 1960s. Despite passionate protests from fans, actress Barbara Rush revealed that the network remained unmoved by the flood of protest mail. Interestingly, in 1966, she found herself co-hosting the Miss Teen International pageant alongside her co-star Ryan O'Neill, a venture that showcased their versatility beyond the confines of the TV series. Diana Highland, another key figure in the drama, faced a pivotal decision when offered the role of Susan Winter. Despite the allure of a promising movie role, she didn't hesitate to embrace the character, recognizing the significance of the opportunity within the world of the show. The dynamics behind the scenes, the relationships among the cast, and the dedicated viewers all contributed to the lasting impact of the show. Indeed, it left its mark on television history, showing its cultural importance and ongoing relevance. After the original Peyton Place show, they made a follow-up in 1985 called Peyton Place The Next Generation. The lady who played Betty Harrington came back for it, which made the story feel connected to the first one. Ed Nelson, one of the actors, said Frank Ferguson, George McRitty, and Tim O'Connor did really well in their roles. It's interesting that Jenna Rollins, who was in the show, didn't allow cigars on set because she didn't like them. This added something different to the atmosphere of making the show. In the end, the TV series was remembered for its characters and performances, and it's still talked about today. 
1965 interview, Christopher Connolly, the talented actor, expressed his initial worries about possibly being written out of the famous TV show. However, to his relief, he not only stayed on the show, but also remained throughout its entire run, becoming a crucial part of it. Lee Taylor Young, on the other hand, showed her acting skills during the audition for the role of Rachel Wells in 1966. She impressed the casting team with her performance from The Glass Menagerie. Despite her short time on the TV series, Taylor Young's commitment to the role was clear as she signed a seven-year contract. Their dedication to their roles resonated with both the audience and the producers. The show, during its long run, saw many actors navigating their roles and storylines. The uncertainties faced by Connolly and Taylor Young mirrored the unpredictable lives of the characters in the fictional town. The dynamics of the show, with its complicated relationships and interwoven plots, kept viewers engaged. The lasting impact of the show is a result of the talented individuals who contributed to its success. These actors added layers of emotion and depth to the characters they played, leaving a strong impression on the audience. Their resilience and commitment in the face of uncertainties reflect the essence of the captivating drama that held viewers' attention for years. And so, the stories behind the scenes of the show continue to unfold, providing context to the on-screen drama that has become a classic in television history. The tales of actors like Christopher Connolly and Lee Taylor Young serve as a reminder of the human element behind the characters and the enduring impact of the show. In 1968, with the departure of Dorothy Malone, Lana Turner, who portrayed the original Constance in the 1957 film adaptation, was rumored to be joining the cast. However, the role eventually went to Barbara Rush. The series began with an hour-long pilot episode in 1962, which featured a storyline involving the Cross family as depicted in the novel on which the series is based. However, producer Erna Phillips opted to remove the Cross family from the series. Two actors from the original 1957 film also appeared in the television adaptation. Aaron O'Brien Moore, who played Mrs. Evelyn Page in the film, portrayed Nurse Choate in the TV series. Additionally, Lee Phillips, who portrayed Michael Rossi in the film, directed seven episodes in season five of the series. In Peyton Place, the writers initially planned for Constance to kill Elliot early on, leading to a dramatic trial. However, Elliot's popularity with the audience changed their minds. James Douglas, known for his role in Hawk's Landing Pilot, impressed Paul Monash, leading to his role as Stephen Cord. Some actors, like the actress who played Constance, felt their characters lacked depth and complained that Mia Farrow's character overshadowed theirs. She eventually left the show in 1968 due to contract disputes, despite winning the Golden Apple Award for cooperation in 1965. The legal issue was resolved outside court. 